Junkanewers take Bay Street on Boxing Day. Parade judges give their take on the new scoring system. The Prime Minister concerned about spectator participation at the annual parades. Two left dead in overnight murders and how some churches expect to be impacted by value-added tax. That and so much more coming up tonight. I'm Christina McNeil and MB12 starts right now. Thanks for joining us this Boxing Day. Where can you find a dancing Chinese ambassador and a shuffling prime minister? The 2013 Boxing Day Junkanoo Parade, of course. Despite Junkanoo officials' decision to push the parade's starting time from midnight to 3 a.m., thousands of Bahamians and visitors flocked to Bay and Shirley Streets in the early morning hours to witness the big dance on Bay. And the various Junkanoo groups didn't disappoint, putting on the performances of their lives. Vonique Toot has the highlights. Despite a three-hour delay, thousands of Jonkanoo fans packed bleachers here on Bay Street this morning for the 2013 Boxing Day Jonkanoo Parade. Now, this year, groups only had one opportunity to wow those fans and about 60 judges. <laughs> Perhaps the most memorable moment of the morning was when a familiar face emerged from the sea of Valley Boys, sending Jankunu fans into a frenzy. Decked out in a gold emperor's robe with face paint and Chinese beard, Prime Minister Perry Christie shuffled onto Rawson Square, proving he still got it. Seventy-year-old Christy, who is a longtime member of the Valley Boys, hasn't rushed in decades, but came out of retirement for just one morning in honor of ailing group leader Gus Cooper. Whether or not I have the energy, the dance and jump about as I used to, probably not as good, um, but they, I'm going to leave something out here on Bay Street, show them something. Um, it's, you know, I think I'm going to have a spectacular impact. But it seems Christy had some competition. Thrilled by the Valley Boys' China theme, the new Chinese ambassador jumped out of his Rawson Square seat and showed Bahamians what he can do. The Valley Boys, which didn't hit Bay Street until after 11 this morning, wasn't the only Category A group to pull out all the stops, though. First out of the gate was the Shell Saxon Superstars, hoping to pull off another win nearly a year after their New Year's Day victory. The crowd went wild as the Category A group rushed down Bay Street, taking spectators on a colorful journey to Taj Mahal, the jewel of India. Long after the Saxons left Bay Street, though, there was no sign of the second Category A group on the lineup. As a result, the prodigal sons lost points even before judges laid eyes on their costumes. Then the Grand Marshal bent to them and said, get ready. We give them 15 minutes to get ready. They say, I can't get ready because I'm not ready. Uh, gave them the two minutes warning, put them on the clock, and they still did not come out. Uh, they protested, saying that they, first of all, they said that they had a blackout problem from their shack or wherever they were coming from. And then after they left the shack, they had problems with the traffic. But they were late, uh, and so the rule says they penalize uh, for being late. 
Despite some setbacks, the prodigal sons eventually made it onto Bay, paying tribute to Bahamian icons. Then came one family, which also highlighted all things Bahamian, from Bahamas here stewardesses. To the sexy straw dolls who rocked Bay Street. In addition to its heart-pumping music, one family sent fans over the edge when a plane flew over Rawson Square during their Bahamas Air demo. Not to be outdone by the other major groups, the music makers and roots also put on quite a show, with the latter even pausing to highlight legendary Bahamian musicians during a brief ceremony in Rawson Square. Let's say good morning, let's say hooray for Priscilla. And what's a parade without activist Rodney Monker and the Bush Warriors, who marched down Bay Street waving hang on murderer signs, sending a clear message to lawmakers sitting in Rosin Square. Each Junkanoo group held its own on Bay Street, but who do Junkanoo fans think will be crowned the Boxing Day champions tonight? The Warriors. Why the Warriors? The music and their performance, the costumes is nice. What do you think about Saxons and One Family Roots? You think they stop? It's garbage! It's garbage! I'm a Saxon, and I've seen Valley on a better China morning, and this morning they do not look the way they're supposed to look on a China morning. Thank you very much. So you think Saxons has it? You think Saxons has it? Um, on, the first, on the first lap, I think we did a little bit. I'm not sort of there, but on our second lap, we did very well, and we were beautiful. And case closed, the parade over. So what do you expect them Saxons to say? They can get their things in a little bit. They coming? They coming? I'm a Roots fan. So you excited to see the Roots this morning? Yes, I am. I think Roots is going to pull off a win. It's been a while. I think so. Reporting for NB12. I'm Vonik Chut. Well, this morning's parade also put the new scoring system to the test. Leaders of at least two Category A Junkanoo groups initially expressed outrage over the changes, but eventually embraced the new system. Head of the parade management team, Douglas Hanna, says the new system seems to be working out well, but the real test will come when scores are tallied. It's working out uh, fine. Uh, it's, well, it's a new scoring system because we have a new procedure with regards to judges and we know that now the scoring has changed in that there's not all those points the whole score is average out of 100 points and so that seemed to be working out fine i won't be able to give a judgment on that until at the end of the day when all the scores have been tallied however hannah says by publishing judges names and photos ahead of the big parades group members now feel secure that those responsible for scoring them will be held accountable this whole perception that because the judges could hide behind you don't know who I am, uh, that there was, they did not have to account for what they did. And it was felt, one of the things uh, was that it was felt that hey, if they had to account for what they did, uh, then this perception will not be there. Now, uh, there's a talk about not being fair, uh, it's a perception. Uh, I, I, I can't say it's real or not real. And despite the many changes made to the two major Junkanoo parades over the years, there's one nagging problem that Junkanoo officials just can't seem to tackle, the lull between Category A group performances. The crowd often grows restless waiting for the next group to hit Bay Street. For instance, the Saxons started off the parade at 3 a.m., but the second Category A group didn't make it onto Bay Street until about 6 a.m. Prime Minister Christie says that's simply unacceptable. People are bored. Look at the faces. You see, it's taking too long for the, the groups that compete with each other to pass by. And I think, I told the minister, he has to find a way 
to improve this for the people who watch and pay and watch and because it's too slow. Christie says it's a vexing issue that must be addressed in the near future. We're not really paying as much attention to it as we should. You know, it, it's just too much being put together um, in one day. And so why festivals last over two or three days in other countries is because they have these other groups come on a, a day before. And the country has to allow that to happen. So maybe, maybe, maybe we have to find a way just to do that. But it seems not everyone turned out this morning in pursuit of wholesome family entertainment. Police arrested a number of young men making mischief during the course of the hours-long parade. Spectators in Rawson Square stood and cheered as police officers paraded them downtown and escorted them to the nearby station. But overall, officials say it was a peaceful parade. Well, a Boxing Day got off to a somber start for two families as two men ages 29 and 24 were killed in separate overnight incidents. Screams pierced through the night along Dorset Street in Fox Hill as police secured the area where a man was shot in the face shortly after midnight. Most of the street was in darkness as dozens of bystanders watched on as the body of the 29-year-old murder victim was placed in a hearse. Police say the victim was sitting on a bucket on the side of the street when the occupants of a silver four-door Honda approached and opened fire. He was pronounced dead at the scene. In the second incident, just two hours later, a man suffering from a gunshot wound to the abdomen was rushed to hospital. Police say that victim succumbed to his injuries early this morning. Reports are the 24-year-old victim was shot during an altercation at Fowler Street off East Bay Street. Police are asking anyone with information on either of these homicides to call police anonymously at 919 or Crime Stoppers at 328-TIPS. According to the Nassau Guardian's records, this latest murder is the 112th for the year.